interleukin 18. What is interleukin 18? And where does it fit in with cryopyrin associated periodic syndromes? CAPS is caused by mutations in the NLRP3 gene. The effect of the genetic mutation means that the NLRP3 protein is overly active. The result is too much inflammation in the body. Now backing up and zooming in a bit, when the NLRP3 protein is activated, and this is for everyone, not just for CAPS, NLRP3 proteins come together and this action causes another protein called ASC to come along too. The cluster of these proteins coming together is called the NLRP3 inflammasome. Caspase 1 is a type of protein known as an enzyme and its job is to cut things. Caspase 1 binds to ASC in the NLRP3 inflammasome and cuts itself, a process called autoactivation. Once it's done that, the active caspase 1 cuts pro-interleukin 1 beta, which makes active interleukin 1 beta. Active interleukin 1 beta spreads the message that inflammation is needed. This is all part of the normal innate immune system response to injury or infection. With CAPS, because of our overactive NLRP3, we end up with too much active interleukin 1 beta and too much inflammation, which is damaging. Think of every disease you can that ends in itis. The suffix itis just means something's inflamed. Colitis, inflamed colon. Pancreatitis, inflamed pancreas. Carditis, inflamed heart. You get the idea. The drugs used to treat CAPS all target interleukin 1 beta and they are very effective, but active caspase 1 also cuts two other proteins, gasdermin D and interleukin 18. Active gasdermin D proteins insert themselves into a cell's membrane, making a hole for the cell contents to leak out of. Too much of this causes the cell to break apart, a process called pyroptosis. Some of the things that leak out of the busted cell then act as signals for other cells and the inflammation continues. This brings me to interleukin 18. What do we really know about this cytokine? Interleukin 18 has been shown in mouse models of CAPS to play its own distinct role in pathology. Interleukin 18 is also thought to have a role in diseases considered to be autoimmune, but poorly understood and with a strong inflammatory element, such as lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's disease and psoriasis. Serum levels of interleukin 18 are also raised in patients with Bichette's disease, a condition I mentioned in my last video. Interleukin 18 is a pro-inflammatory cytokine that has similarities to interleukin 1 beta, but also some important differences. Unlike interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 18 is present in its inactive form in almost all cell types. So what happens in cells where we have NLRP3, ASC, caspase 1, pro-interleukin 18, but no interleukin 1 beta? The interleukin 1 blocking drugs used to treat CAPS wouldn't do much for those cells. And this is the case for gastrointestinal epithelial cells, the cells that line the whole gastrointestinal tract. There's another player I haven't mentioned, and that's caspase 4. Some researchers claim caspase 4 is essential for activation of interleukin 18, and in fact, the inflammasome is not needed. In that context, it wouldn't make any difference if we had hyperactive NLRP3 or not, except caspase 4 activated interleukin 18 would be secreted and act on receptors of neighboring cells, particularly nearby immune cells, and that would get the attention of NLRP3 and all of its inflammasome friends to escalate that inflammation. This would suggest to me that an actual infection could kick off a more severe and lasting pathology in some CAPS patients, and that has certainly been my lived experience. Interleukin 18 is described as having pleiotropic effects. All that means is it does a lot of different things. It has been shown to be protective in some contexts and destructive in others. As with everything in the human body, the levels need to be right. Things need to be regulated appropriately. Interleukin 18 is regulated by a protein called interleukin 18 binding protein, which deactivates interleukin 18 by binding to it. Cells generally have 20 times more interleukin 18 binding protein than interleukin 18. And when interleukin 18 does get released from a cell, 80% of it stays behind in the cell, unless the cell breaks apart. Interleukin 18 can then bind to receptors on neighboring cells and signal to those cells to activate inflammatory genes, inducing production of another pro-inflammatory cytokine you might have heard of called TNF-alpha, among others. There are a couple of drugs now that have been made to target interleukin 18. 
and one of them was set for phase two clinical trials in Bichette's disease in 2018. But five years later, the status for that trial is still set to not yet recruiting. That drug has also reportedly been through phase one trials for Crohn's disease and is now in development for atopic dermatitis. Another drug that mimics the interleukin-18 binding protein is being investigated for hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis and adult onset Stills disease, two auto-inflammatory conditions involving the NLRC4 gene. NLRC4 has been shown to recruit NLRP3. It all seems so complicated, and it is, but so many things keep pointing back to NLRP3 and its key cytokines, interleukin-1-beta and interleukin-18. Targeting interleukin-1-beta in CAPS patients has been very successful, but it is only part of the story.